Warrior at its most basic level is the story of three men, a father and his two sons. Each of the men is broken in some way, but each of these men we can't help but admire. I think that's the beginning of what makes Warrior a true movie, despite it being fiction, because every man is broken in some way. Every guy is constantly fighting to cover up some wound, some vulnerability he's ashamed about. But then again, there's something in most every guy that wants to be a man, that's trying to soldier on despite his wounds and be a man that you can't help but admire. First, there's Patty Conlon, the father, played convincingly by a grisly, weathered Nick Nolte. He's really the source of why these men are broken. It's clear that growing up, he was an alcoholic and abusive father both to his sons and to their now deceased mother. Things were so bad that his wife and oldest son Tommy abandoned him some years ago and broke off all communication. His one positive attribute from the past was that he pushed his son Tommy to be a great wrestler, but even that was a mixed bag. Fast forward to the present and Patty is alone as a consequence of his sins, but he's trying. He's trying to right his wrongs. He's trying to be better. He's nearing a thousand days being sober. He's humble. He knows what he's done and he accepts it. I know you got a wife and kid in there. I, I, I've got a, a granddaughter in there I haven't seen in three years. And, and another one I haven't even ever met. Yeah, why is that, Pop? Why is that? Do you remember having anything to do with that? Yeah. Yeah. He's trying to do the best he can with what's left of his life, hoping that there's some sense of dignity he can earn. Tommy Conlon is the most complex character in this film, the most troubled and broken, and as a consequence the most likable, despite the fact he's not the clear hero in the movie. Tom Hardy deserves ample praise for playing Tommy masterfully, with such a brooding exterior that's masking one level of pent-up rage in the character, and another deeper hidden layer of vulnerability, and an even deeper layer of goodness that he wants to manifest, but doesn't know how. He's deeply resentful toward both his father and his younger brother, his father for being such a horrible role model. We have absolutely no use for you. His brother for failing to join him and his mother when they abandoned their father. The more we learn about Tommy, the more we learn that his pain didn't stop when he left home and later joined the Marines. Things only got worse, and he's got so much rage and bitterness pent up inside him about that. So why do we like him so much? Because despite everything, he's still here, and he's still trying to move forward in life. Instead of using that rage to hurt other people like his father did, he uses it to propel himself forward. He appears to be just living for himself, living for survival. And that's admirable enough given his past, even if it means he closes himself off to everyone around him. But slowly we start seeing that there's some much deeper layers of goodness in Tommy as well. He's not really just living for himself, far from it. He wants to be a better person, but he doesn't know how to do it. He wants connection back with the men in his life, but that's the last thing in the world he's willing to admit. Finally, there's Brendan Conlon. He's the person we're supposed to cheer for, and for good reason. He's the underdog. His dad never tried to train him like he did Tommy when they were younger. He went through the abuses of the home too, but here he is. A good husband, a good dad, a good influence on his community. When he's struggling to make ends meet, he does anything noble to fulfill his manly duties of providing the basics for his family. He won't consider bankruptcy or foreclosure. That's not how I do things. The definition of courage is being willing to risk personal harm in service of some higher ideal. And Brendan literally lives that definition of being willing to return to a life of fighting when it becomes the only feasible way of keeping a roof above his family's head. But Brendan's broken too, although to a lesser degree than his father and brother. He's bitter about the way his father ignored him in order to train Tommy when they were young. He's slow to believe his father is really trying to improve. Yeah. I forgive you. But I do not trust you. As the stories develop, these estranged men have their lives brought back into convergence in a way that involves us getting to watch some fantastic MMA fight sequences. This is a manly man's movie, and I love that it doesn't feel like a Hollywood blockbuster. The cinematography, 
the score, the lack of pretentiousness, give us the feeling of something more intimate and authentic, which is to the credit of director Gavin O'Connor who cameos in the film. But what makes this movie great is what it says about men. And here's what this movie says about men. Real men take responsibility despite arguments to the contrary. That's what each of these men does, and that's the central reason we admire each of them despite their shortcomings. Patty has taken responsibility for his past. He doesn't deny what he did. He doesn't hide from it. He doesn't blame it on external factors. When he's searingly criticized for what he's done, he takes it, like a man. And he does what he can with the life he has left. Tommy takes responsibility for his life, for the fact that he's the only person that can move himself forward. It's not someone else's job. And he takes responsibility for those for whom he has a duty. There's this scene with Tommy toward the end of the movie that is truly one of the most moving scenes I've ever seen in film. Brendan takes absolute responsibility for his family, for his wife and daughters, the women in his life, but ultimately for the men in his family as well. But I don't want to give away the rest of the movie. I love this movie because every guy is broken. Every guy has his wounds. Every guy has his reasons why life is beating him down and his excuses for inaction. But the guys who are trying to be men say that despite all that, I'm going to take on some responsibility. I'm going to take responsibility for something, for someone. It starts with yourself. You take responsibility for your past. You take responsibility for what you can of the present. And once you've ordered that, you take responsibility for all of your present, then your future. And you expand out from there. You start taking responsibility for other people, for your family, for your community, for your nation, eventually for the world. You start with what you can and you expand out from there. Thanks for watching today. I'll see you out in the arena.